Joe, it's been nearly six months since our last competitive fixture now. So just how excited are you to get things back underway in the Champions League? Yeah, look, excitement's the uh, the right word. We are, um, you know, we've uh, we've obviously uh, uh, over that period just learned to love the game again, and uh, you know, had the opportunity to refresh and um, you know, and just uh, and just have this real uh, this real hunger and and excitement to get back playing. So um, you know, it's just great to be back with everyone, and uh, you know, we're looking forward to a an amazing an amazing opportunity next week. I mean, we were in exceptional form in the competition prior to lockdown, weren't we? I mean won four out of four games and scored 19 goals as well. Um, but given the outbreak of coronavirus, what will be different this time around, do you think? Well, look, obviously the shape of the competition is is now knockout. Um, you know, uh, obviously you prepare for uh, for two legs and you prepare to go away and then you prepare to come home or, or vice versa. And, uh, you know, it's a different mindset. It's a different mindset, um, and again, I, I've taken it very much as a as a, as a positive um, sort of spin in regards to uh, you know we've been able to, to to refresh the team. We've been able to obviously make the necessary changes that we've needed to, and um, you know, and uh, and I think you know prepare in a way where. They're, they're very familiar on, on who they're playing. They understand who they're playing, um, but also not lose sight of, of us, not lose sight of um, we need to play our game, we need to play our style, we need to play to our methodology and make sure that we're, uh, we're, we're clear in controlling that um, and, and, and the rest will, will take care of itself. While we've been away from competitive action, you've overseen uh, three friendly games now. Um, just how have your side looked in pre-season so far? Yeah, look, we've tried to obviously, um, uh, I suppose, manipulate's not 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 the best word, but we've tried to at least familiarise, um, you know, our team with what could happen. So we've worked a lot in um, in phases. We've worked a lot in um, in uh, trying to get the stimulus of of what we're you know what we're hopefully going to be up against um, at at some point. So we've we've done a little bit of, of structural work, but we've also done a lot of work in keeping our tempo high and keeping and keeping the intensity quite high, um, uh, which obviously will 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 be part of what we're going to be up against. Um, but um, you know. Um, the details have been very, very important. We've made sure that we've kept our standards and details high. And uh, and even though we've had three positive results in in all in all three of these three seasons, we've um, we've finished them off with a penalty shootout just to make sure that 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 could be something that that might happen. You know, we don't want it to go that far. We want to be able to finish the game off uh, before that, but it could be a reality. And um, so they've been three games of just getting as much information and familiarisation uh, to what could happen next week. I was going to ask about that, actually, because with the ties now going to just a single leg, the mental aspect comes into it a lot more, doesn't it? How do you go about preparing your side for that? I know you mentioned about the, uh, the penalty shootouts, but is there other stuff that you can do with them? Oh, very much so. I mean, um, you know, um, trying to... Uh, Trying to manipulate, like even even training has been, um, you know, really really focused on not wasting any any moment or any opportunity to simulate, um, you know, PSG the way they press, the way they the way they play in transition, the way they defend, um, and everything's been geared to to familiarising the players to that. So um, so yeah, we've we've not wasted one opportunity of training, whether it's even a warm up. Whether it's even a passing a, a passing warm up that you know there's something that um, you know sticks to what we want to do, but also familiarises themselves on on what we need to take into the game. So we've we've tried to, as, as I said, give them as much information as possible. Um, where it's where it's where where then the pressure moments aren't pressure moments. They're familiar with them. And some new faces actually in, in training as well. Steph Catley, Noah Marit, uh, Marlon Gut. And Lydia Williams will join the club this summer. Um, they're all eligible to play in the tournament. So, just how how well have they settled in to the club so far? Yeah, look, I mean, um, they're they're all uh, all amazing characters and all amazing, um, you know, uh, professionals. Um, you know, I obviously worked with Steph and and Lydia at Melbourne City, uh, so. You know, we obviously they obviously know. So there was a little bit of familiarity coming into the group. Uh, they played with Kim Little and Jen Beattie at Melbourne City, also. So, so they they've integrated great. Um, you know, Noel's been playing. Um, you know, 
uh, right up to to the to the end in the German Cup with with Wolfsburg. So, uh, but she's a, she's a known player in 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 world football. Um, and uh, and uh, young Marlon Gutz, who is um, you know we think going to be one of the uh, the best holding midfielders, uh, if not Europe, um, you know uh, around the world. And uh, you know she's uh, she's got her first professional sort of contract coming out of um, obviously Grasshopper Zurich and. Um, you know she's integrated well with the Swiss girls, so they've all they've all integrated well, and and um, you know I I underpin that with just great characters, just humble humble characters, and just great great professionals. Let's move on to PSG then. Yeah. Um, we know that they're going to be a difficult side. They've got a, an impressive defensive record. I think they've only conceded seventeen times in sixteen league games this season. How would you describe their style of play? Look, they have a very, um, a very, very formidable top three. Um, very quick. Um, they are expansive going forward. They will send numbers forward, um, and they they are they are um, dangerous in transition and especially in 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 areas beyond beyond our defensive uh, our defensive line. So, so look, I mean, uh, again, limiting those opportunities, limiting those those transition moments. And and look, I think it suits us. It suits our our way because we want to have the ball. We want to keep the ball. So the 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 minimal opportunities that we get for them to to attack directly, um, I think, will nullify their their strengths. Um, but in saying that, you know, um, uh, I'm, I'm calling it a cup final because every game's a cup final. Um, you know, it's a moment. It's a, it's a mistake. It's a situation. It's a, it's a, a flash of brilliance that's uh, that's gonna that's gonna unlock two top teams. I'm going to assume that you watched the uh, French Cup final between PSG and Lyon earlier this week. Um, if so, what did you make of it? Um, yeah, look, it, it was a game that um, obviously Lyon um, probably you know uh, had had more of the. Um, the ascendancy in terms of in terms of control, um, but again, you know, there were moments where where PSG did did expose a, a transition when when they did have control, and that's when they're dangerous. So, that were probably the areas we we picked on quite a lot. Um, look, there were a couple of other other areas we have been focusing on in terms of their their attacking movements when they do try to control the back four with with the back four. So, look, I mean. There are some areas, but but again, it's nothing that um, you know we're unfamiliar with. It's nothing that we haven't um, we haven't found or seen in the WSL, um, you know. And uh, and again, uh, you know, and I said this earlier that um, you know the WSL has probably set us up in good stead for this for this tournament because it is a tough competition. Every any team you can play on their day will give you trouble, um, and um, you know, and and. I don't know if if it's right to make the comparison with the French league, but um, you know there is there is definitely seven or eight teams in the WSL that that are strong. You know, I I probably have to you know say that in the in the French league we'll have to wait and see how many teams are are you know of of that of that level. You know, there's there's the top two obviously, and probably one or two that are challenging. But um, you know, and 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 as I said, the WSL holds us in good stead for these tournaments. When we spoke to you back in May, you told us that lockdown had made you appreciate all of the little things about football and that you were going to come back to Colney hungrier than ever for success and to make new memories. Is that a feeling that you feel is now shared among your squad as well now that you've had a chance to work with them again? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I, I think, um, you know, I, I probably speak on, on behalf of uh, the majority of the squad that we we did miss each other. We did miss the day to day. We did miss the uh, the fun, the the nuances, the, um, you know, all the all the little things that um, that that we probably take for granted in uh, in, uh, in in football. But, um, you know, I think there's a real hunger. There's a real hunger next week, you know, that a we're representing this great club in in the most prestigious tournament in the world, club tournament in the world. Um, we're we're a united group that that loves putting on this strip and uh, and being part of, uh, you know, being part of this tournament. And um, you know, we we feel as if there's a there's a real, um, I suppose, um, 
a hunger to to prove that we are one of the top teams in Europe, and um, you know we we want to give that every opportunity next week, and um, you know we're we're delighted that we got the opportunity to finish the tournament, and uh, that we are in the top eight in Europe. You know that 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 in alone is is a massive achievement, but I do believe that we have the opportunity to go further. Unfortunately, we are going to have to do this without the fans at the stadium cheering us on. So for all of the fans who are going to be supporting the team from back home, just what's your message? to them rest assured that um you know every moment every second uh every opportunity um will be will be representing uh this club in the manner that it should be on the biggest stage in the world where we deserve to be um and that um there'll be nothing left you know un- unturned in our in our preparation in um in the work that we're going to do um and and to make sure that we we make every Arsenal fan proud. Um, you know, we're going to miss you. We love having you there. We love, we love the energy and um, we hope we get the energy from, uh, from your television screens.